remiss if I did not mention our appreciation to Jack Fulton, who uh, had the real tough job of saying yes to some musicians and, well, maybe another time to others. He, uh, he was the band leader for this whole thing, and we really appreciate the love and care that he did in arranging this wonderful event. Taylor. Uh, a little while ago, Jim Armstrong and I played a beautiful song in honor of Lance, and uh, this little story about the song, which kind of reminds me about my early experiences uh, playing occasionally with Lance. Uh, Jim managed to fax the, uh, the music for that song to me last night, and uh, when we played it uh, before this afternoon, we'd never played it together before, and I'd never seen it before last night. Which probably explained why there was an occasional wrong chords uh, coming out of the piano. Uh, which, of course, is the last thing I would ever really want to do at, uh, at an event in honor of Lance Harrison, because Lance, musically, was a perfectionist. And, uh, and I remember when uh, I had the great honor and privilege uh, many years ago, occasionally, to, uh, to sit in Lance's band or to uh, fill in for, for Frank Mansell when he wasn't uh, able to play and uh, occasionally, just occasionally, play a wrong chord and a change and, and Lance would turn around and fix me with this basilisk stare that would kind of freeze your bones and blood and turn you to stone because Lance, you know, Lance had the original printed sheet music of every song he played, at least so he assured me anyway, and he played it the way it was printed right from the very beginning. So uh, so it used to be quite a bit of a nerve writing experience for me on those occasions when I didn't get a chance to play in Lance's band. It was a lot better when he was a sideman playing in a band where, where I was involved because you knew he was going to play everything perfectly. And uh, I, will, I will always remember Lance's musicianship and uh, also remember Lance every time I put a bump note in the car. <laughs> Before he broke his uh, one of his fingers and he couldn't play the clarinet anymore. Um, we got talking on many occasions. I got to know him at the Pacific Inn where Red Beans and Rice played. Uh, one memory I have of Lance is at the Penticton Jazz Festival, the last one he attended. And uh, he always liked to go to the jam session afterwards at the Best Western. And he was sitting there shivering. It was a, it was a clear day, but it, the sun was going down. It was getting very cold. And Lance was very, very cold. So I went over and gave him my jacket. And he says, what are you eating? And I was eating this cheese sandwich. And I had been making them just prior to that for different people that wandered by. So I made him one. And then he got up and played, and that was his last appearance at the Penticton Jazz Festival. He used to tell me that he lived in the Okanagan at one time. His father owned a fruit ranch up there. And uh, he remembers the Sycamore's boat. He never went on it. But he had a sign. I, I may be in air. If I'm in air, this is the way I remember it from Lance. But he had a sign called the Bing is King on his father's fruit ranch. And he took it to his house in, in Vancouver because he was a great fan of Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby was from his era and he had that sign, the Bing is King, in his house. He would tell humorous stories on occasion. He was just a very, very uh, loving, kind, humorous man. Gentle is certainly the word. And I think he told me that Louis Armstrong used to stay at his house on occasion. And one Saturday evening, I think it was a Saturday, the night before the concert, they were going out for spaghetti dinner. And Louis Armstrong, it was at Pacini's, the old Pacini's restaurant, and Lance, uh, no, uh, Louis Armstrong piled his plate up two big helpings of spaghetti. And he says, uh, don't worry about me. I, I got this stuff cleans you right out. So the next day at the Orpheum Theater, I believe, and I could be wrong there, Lance was to introduce Louis Armstrong. 
And what they were going to do is they, Lance would introduce them and then they'd bring the lights up. And Louis Armstrong wasn't aware that uh, the mic was on, it was a live mic. And he said to Lance, just before Lance was to introduce them, he says, I've been shitting spaghetti for the last two hours. <laughs> Anyway, to uh, Lance and his many friends, uh, to Lance's family and his many friends here, he, he was a tremendous guy, one of my very favorites, and I'm sure he is too. Thank you.